Hello. Hi, I'm Whitney. And I'm Melissa. Um, first, we're going to talk to you about the winter recital. Um, it's held at, this, at the high school. Um, Mrs. Dire Mrs. Corelli directs it. Anyone that wants to be in it can participate. Um, most of the performances are singing and dancing. Um, there's instrumental stuff also. And it's just a great way for the school to see the talents of the other students um, that aren't in the play and aren't in other performances. So they just do it themselves and people yep. can watch them. Anyone can do it. If you just have to talk to Mrs. Corelli and she can put you into the performance. Like this is a duet, you can do, you can do a lot of things. Whatever your talent may be having to do with music. And it's, it's always fun to go watch. And now we're gonna show you a little more about the arts and music here at the high school and about Brigadoon. Hi. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm Doug. And we're gonna show you some clips of our play Brigadoon. And Brigadoon was um, the, the musical directors were uh, Mrs. Corelli and Mrs. Morse. Um, the set was built by the stage craft class with Mr. Anastasio. Mrs. Winberg was the choreographer. And, uh, and uh, the leads of this, this play were uh, mostly seniors. There are John Coates, Lisa Tyler, Jesse Donato, John Bayless, and Casey Carr. And it's a pretty interesting play. Yeah, that was pretty good. We saw an uh, assembly of it, and I thought it was pretty good. It was kind of funny. And so now we go to Whitney and Melissa with the Dan Kennedy interview. Hi. Hello. We're back, and we're here to talk to you about Dan Kennedy. He's a freshman here at the high school, and has been involved in performing arts since he got here, and he was also involved in it at Timberlane, the middle school, where in seventh through eighth he was the lead in the play. And then he came to the high school this year as a freshman and played Charlie and played Brigadoon, which was a very good part, especially for a freshman. It was a somewhat a lead, and uh, in the play, his character got married and he had to kiss a girl. And he did very well. I think he had a solo, maybe two, and he did really well, and he was a very good singer, and it was really enjoyable to watch. Here, here's a clip of an interview from him. Name of the play. Well, the name of the play that we're doing this year is called Brigadoon. What's the play about? Well, the play is about these two main characters, Jeff and Tommy, come from the United States to Scotland, where they find an imaginary land called Brigadoon, the name of the show. And Tommy, the main character, falls in love with a woman named Fiona, and they fall happily in love. What is the role that you play and what is he like? Well, the role that I currently star in is the role named Charlie, and he's a fairly decent character, and I'm very proud of myself for getting it. How long have you been acting? Well, I'd say I've been acting since the fourth grade. How'd you get involved in the play? Well, I've always been, I've always loved to watch the high school productions because I always thought that they were really very well done from the years that my brother came to uh, the high school, which was four years before this year. And he was in the musical Guys and Dolls, and it was just very well done. And ever since then, I was like, I can't wait until I get to high school because the shows are just very well done. What influenced you to start acting? Well, I'd say I, I've been influenced by my parents, my older brother, not my younger brother. Um, I've also been influenced by teachers, friends. They've all been very supportive of my acting career. Hi. That was great. We're going to take you over to the jazz band now, back with Matt and Doug. Hi. Hello. Now we're going to show you some clips of our jazz band. And uh, our, jazz, our jazz band is a pretty good jazz band, you know. We've won a lot of we've won a lot of awards, and uh, right now that that's uh, Paul Gazzillo playing guitar. And here you go, Doug. Um, it was directed by uh, Mr. Swab. Um, they mostly play um, jazz and funk music. What you say? Um, the regular band kids and others who must try out.
there's about 17 students. Um, some seniors in the band, there's Julian Ross, who plays bass. Uh, Paul Gazzillo, that we just saw. Um, yeah. Um, Jacob Herring and Jamie Orlando. And that's our jazz band. And now we're going to go to Sam and James with the lunch. Hi, Hi, I'm James and this is Sam. I'm Hi. going to tell you about the luncheon. Yeah, uh, the luncheon that happened during Multicultural Week was one of the many events that happened um, where in students were able to interact with people that were brought into the school so they got more of an um, influence of what actually happened during certain events during time. The luncheon that you see now is the students had lunch with Dr. Leon Bass and he was one of the performers that came in and discussed many of the inf um, African influences that came out of the Harlem Renaissance. and. Um, the impact that they had on the world. He also witnessed the Holocaust and gave his um, a d brief detail of his experience without witnessing. And he so during an assembly, he brought to the students and an experience through his eye point of what happened. And here you see him having lunch with the students and um, the principals of the school, which was a great event um, that happened during Multicultural Week, which was the first annual in the school that was brought to us. It was really cool and it was really thing a great thing to interest. So. Now we're going to go to Whitney and Melissa, and they're going to tell you about the Multicultural Fair. Hi. <laughs> the Multicultural Fair was, um, it took place in the gym, and it was just, it was a bunch of people from different um, ethnic, ethnic backgrounds. backgrounds. <laughs> and um, they did, they did um, henna, and there was lots of artwork from different cultures. Um, there's flamenco dancing, and um, you get uh, your name written in different languages. There's like Chinese and Arabic, and Hebrew and Islam and Japanese, and there were just a bunch of different languages. It was really cool to see yeah. how your name would be written. There was um, Chinese artwork, and um, right there, they're showing some artifacts um, from different countries, and this is. Um, a sitar. Yeah, this is, right? yeah, Mr. Roland yes. was an English teacher here who's playing the sitar, which is a type of guitar, I think, instrument. Yeah. It was really, really cool. It was very interesting to say. I thought it was lots of fun. It was, yeah, it was, it was. You went during your gym period and you just got to go around all the different stations. And it was really fun to see all the different types of things and all the different cultures. And all the stations were run by students from that culture. It was really interesting. Uh, and melting potluck dinner. Now, yeah. Next, melting potluck dinner. Hi. Hi. We're gonna tell you about the melting potluck dinner. Uh, this year we had a melting potluck dinner, and it was just a lot of food. Yeah. Everyone came in. They brought they each part of the kind of food, and everyone just ate. Yeah. I heard that was excellent. Yeah, I heard the food was really good. Yeah. Different styles of cultures and stuff. Music. Yeah, there's also the music. String quartet, people dancing. People even sang. And uh, all the leftovers for this, they were all donated to the Trenton Soup Kitchen, so that's a good one. And uh, many uh, restaurants also brought food, like the Downtown Deluxe Fried Chicken, uh, or Fried Chicks. Uh, black eyed peas and cornbread. Oh, this is different kinds of food. And um, now we're going to now we're going to go to uh, Mr. Hobo with James and Sam. Actually, we're going to Melissa. Hi. Um, Hi. We're here to talk about talk about Mr. Hobo, which is an annual event here at Hopewell, and it's. It's a talent contest of about with senior guys, and it this, this year was the ninth annual one, and it's always very funny. And there's different events the guys participate in. There's evening wear, sports wear, talent, and things like that. And I guess this was one of the talents. And there, the seniors that were involved this year were Matt Lanetta, T.J. Invergada, Brian Takis, Brian Slytoka, Steve Kaiser, Jeff Greer, Jorge Cruz. Dan McKee, John Bayless, Andy Shallis, and Shantan Agro. And um, 
It was very funny this year, and the winner ended up to be TJ and Brada. And it's always a good thing to go see because all the proceeds go to the American Cancer Society. So it's always funny and, and uh, really fun to watch. And it's also a good cause because it goes to charity. And it's always enjoyable. And um, that's, there are many people that also come and help out with skits. I know that Mike Grillo helped out with, what was it, Brian? TJ's? TJ and Regatta's. Which one, so? And that's Mr. Hobel. And now we're going to go over to James and Sam, and they're going to give you a little taste about Hobel with Around School. <laughs> Hi, we're back. Now we're going to show you some footage of our school. Yeah, kind of bring the community into our classrooms and then kind of see what we do during the course of the day. Right now you're seeing a wood shop class, and this is where they make projects such as tables, chairs, stuff like that. They bring them into, um, in the beginning of the year they pick a project and they work on it all year. Here you see Grace Rarick working on a chair, and um, uh, people make guitars and other people make tables, poker tables, kitchen tables. And now you're seeing an art class. Our art program is very strong in Hopewell. They help with the sets of the play and other things. They often have displays in the main corridor and in the 100 hall. Um, their artwork is really talented. We have a lot of people going to the Governor's School for Art, so it's really strong um, program. It's one of the prides of Hopewell Valley. And now I believe you're witnessing a health class um, in Hopewell. So uh, health is something that each student each year, oh well, um, every student each year has to go through um, one semester a year. It's taken out of their phys ed in the program. And now we're going to send you guys to um, Matt and Doug for the an Adrian interview, interview. With one of our talented art students. Yeah. Hello again. And uh, now we're going to take you to the Adrian Rachel interview. And Adrian Rachel's a senior this year, and she's very active in art. And so let's show you that interview. And I'm going to be interviewing her on her artwork. So, Adrian, how long have you been doing artwork? Um, ever since I was like, uh, I guess in like second grade, I've been doing art. Um, when I got up he here to the high school, though, I dropped out for one year. Um, that's when Doc wasn't here. Um, and then as soon as he came back, I started uh, art again. So, what's your favorite medium to work in? Um. I guess I'd have to say pencil. I mean, I don't know. It's not that hard. I don't think it's that hard to work with, but I don't know. I like shading and stuff, so I like pencil a lot. So do you plan to go go on to college for art? Yeah, I'm uh, taking a year off. Um, I'm planning on going to University of the Arts. I'm moving to Philly next year, and then um, hopefully I'll uh, get in in a year and go there. And that was the Adrian Rachel interview. And now we're going to James and Sam for the Cole interview. <laughs> Hi, we're back to show you an interview with our one of our gym teachers, who also is our JV soccer coach and our varsity ice hockey coach. Mm -hmm. We did an interview on him with his ice hockey team and how they did for the year. So here game to get ready. Uh, usually, uh, our pregame skate consists of going over our breakouts, going over our defensive uh, positioning, going over any tactical work that we want to employ for a particular team, a game plan of such. Um, we do some shooting drills and some skating drills and uh, just try to get our focus preparing ourselves for the next game. And what do you look for in like your players in hockey? Uh, the biggest thing I look for is an athlete. Uh, the second thing I look for is a hockey player. Uh, and the third thing I look for is a desire to be the best they can be. Uh, all of those fall into, into line, but it, it, as, as a participant and as an athlete, uh, overall what I look for is, is the best young men that I can find. And all of those criteria make up the best young men I can find. Uh, they also need to have uh, their priorities straight with their academics. Uh, make sure that they keep that in line, uh, the family life needs to be in order and so forth. You look for the kind of kids that you would want on a hockey team that you would want to show respect for and to be respected by other teams around the league and that's the kind of kids we're looking for. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview. Keeping in the line of interviews, we have Sam Warner here who is one of our talented lacrosse players and also a uh, tattoo uh, leader. That's what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. So we're going to show you the footage of her interview. Soon. Very nice. 
What kind of things does Tattoo do? Um, we primarily go into elementary schools and target kids through interaction with the students about the dangers of smoking and tobacco use. Um, lately we've been outstretching our reach into the middle schools hoping that we can attract an older crowd sooner. Hmm. How does Tattoo go about achieving its goal? Um, we do a lot of marches and a lot of protests. Um, we go into the elementary schools, as I said before, and also the junior highs. We try to influence as many kids as we can um, to know that they are not in danger and peer pressure is not going to be um, associated with smoking and that it's easy for them to say no. What kind of protests do you do? Uh, we uh, attended the march in Trenton for the Great American Smoke Out, and we just walked up and down the street play, pleading for people to stop smoking just for that one day. It's usually a 24-hour thing, and it helps people get on the road to quitting. Hmm, that's very interesting. Has Tattoo taught you anything? Yeah, Tattoo has taught me a lot about um, the dangers of smoking and also taught me a lot about the media and how it contacts for little kids. It tries to target mostly 14-year-olds, especially in the tobacco industry, and it's helped me to realize that there's certain things that I should buy that don't support tobacco use and some things that do, so I try to steer away from supporting them as much as I can. Good job. Do you well, <laughs> we hope you enjoyed the interviews and most of the show. And our final presentation for you today is we're going to show you a little bit of nature. Horses Actually, it's farm general. animals. Horses, to be exact. And we have some great footage of them. So we're going to roll that so you can have some peaceful look at a nice farm in Hopewell Valley. This is one of our students' farms, Alice and Um It's a 10-acre farm. It has been in the family for a couple generations. The three horses you're seeing, am I still on? Yeah. The three horses you're seeing are named Jack, <laughs> Cooper, and BJ. And I wouldn't be hey. one of them. So <laughs> we're over. I hope you enjoyed our segment and tune in next time for another production from Hopewell Valley Central TV classes. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.